Today, the International Committee of the Red Cross can be found providing humanitarian aid wherever it is needed. Whether it is in times of war, earthquake, tsunami, famine, or any other situation where aid is required, the symbol of the Red Cross is a prominent and welcome sight to those requiring its assistance. But the organisation that today provides aid without any partisan affiliations finds its origins in the work of mainly one man and his chance observation of the aftermath of battle. Jean-Henri Denant was born in Switzerland on May 8, 1828, into a wealthy Calvinist family. His parents were strongly humanitarian in their views, regarding their responsibility to their fellow man as a requirement of their faith. Henry's father believed that charitable work within the community was a true virtue and spent many years working to better the lives of orphans and aiding and encouraging those released from prison to better themselves and become valuable members of society. Dunant's mother also held a strong sense of civic duty and regularly worked to alleviate the plight of the sick and the poor. This humanitarian upbringing inspired the young Henry to perform his own charitable work and at the age of 18 he became a member of the Geneva Society for Almsgiving and a year later, in 1847, he and a small group of friends formed the Thursday Association. The small group met, as the name suggests, each Thursday for Bible study and to commit to charitable work amongst the poor and those in need of help. Away from the Thursday Association, Dunant spent much of his free time engaged in prison visits and social work. By November of 1852, Dunant had founded the Geneva branch of the Young Man's Christian Association, and in 1855 he took part in the Paris Conference whose aim was the founding of the YMCA as an international organisation. In 1849, Henry Dunant was a student at the College of Geneva, but did not show promise in his academic studies. His grades were poor, so he decided to leave the college and instead began, and eventually successfully completed, an apprenticeship at the Lulin et Sorta Bank. But it was in 1856 that Dunant was witness to events that would lead him to lay the foundations of what would become the Red Cross. In 1856, Dunant had founded a business with the intention of operating within the French colonies. He had approached the financial and industrial company Mons Dierma Mills and was granted a land concession within French-occupied Algeria where he intended to farm and harvest corn. However, the land and water rights had not been clearly defined within the agreement and the local colonial authorities were not being helpful towards him. In 1859, as a result of the contractual obstacles which he believed were being intentionally placed in his way, Dunant decided to take his appeals to the highest authority in France, the Emperor Napoleon III himself. At the time, Napoleon was in Lombardy with his army. France had elected to ally themselves with the Piedmont Sardinia who were engaged in a war against Austrian influence in Italy. Napoleon's headquarters were located within the small city of Solferino. Dunant had written a book in which he overtly praised Napoleon and intended to present it to the Emperor in order to gain his favour. With this plan in mind, he headed for Solferino. He arrived on the evening of June 24, 1859, and the scene that greeted him was to make a lifelong impression on the young Dunant. During the day, a major battle had taken place nearby between the French and Austrian armies. 23,000 men were still laying, wounded, dying or dead on the battlefield, with little to no effort being made to attend the survivors. Dunant immediately began to organise the local population, in particular the girls and women of the town, encouraging them to administer to the sick and injured soldiers. The equipment and medicines required were practically non-existent, so Dunant took the initiative and purchased much-needed materials from his own money and organised the building of makeshift hospitals to attend to the needs of injured soldiers from both sides. He instructed the women and girls that they were to treat each and every patient equally, regardless of their own allegiances, and had the hospital adopt the slogan, Tutti Fratelli, All Our Brothers. He even managed to secure the release of Austrian doctors who had been taken prisoners of war by the French. On his return to Geneva, Dunant wrote about his experiences in Solferino and self-published 1,500 copies of a book entitled A Memory of Solferino. He wrote a graphic account of the battle, the financial and human cost and the unimaginable chaos that followed, then distributed the book to Europe's political and military leaders. It was in the pages of that book that Dunant first postulated the idea of a neutral organisation to provide support and assistance without partisanship in times of conflict and crisis. 
It was during Dunant's travels throughout Europe to promote the ideas in his book, which were being positively received, that he met the president of the Geneva Society for Public Welfare, Gustave Moynier. Moynier made the book and its suggestions the principal topic of the February 1863 meeting of the Society where Dunant's recommendations were examined and were positively received by the members. They proceeded to form a quorum of five to examine the possibility of setting Dunant's plans in motion. The first meeting, which was held on the 17th of February 1863, was attended by Gustave Moynier, General Henri Dufour, Dr. Louis Appiah, Dr. Theodore Monnier, and Dunant himself. It is this date, 17th of February 1863, that is now recognised as the founding date of the International Red Cross Committee. But things were not to run smoothly. From the first meeting, Moynier and Dunant disagreed about the ability of an organisation to remain neutral in times of conflict. Moynier considered Dunant's plans to be unfeasible, but undeterred, Dunant continued to promote his cause whenever he spoke with the great and the good of 19th century European society. His tenacity was paying off, and in October of 1863, the group organised a meeting in Geneva attended by representatives of 14 states to discuss ways to improve the care given to the injured as a result of conflict. One year later, on the 22nd of August 1864, the meeting led to a diplomatic conference organised with the help of the Swiss Parliament, and 12 states sent the diplomats who signed the first Geneva Convention. Sadly, Dunant's involvement with the Red Cross was soon to come to an end. His business interests had suffered and his declaration of bankruptcy did not go down well with his Calvinist peer group. He was ostracised by his community, expelled from the board of the Red Cross and even dismissed from his involvement with the YMCA. The Red Cross went from strength to strength, but its greatest challenge was to come in 1914 with the outbreak of World War I. World War I began in July of 1914, and this saw over 1,200 volunteers from across the globe mobilised to provide assistance to the military nurses and surgeons. The Red Cross was also amongst the first medical support organisation to deploy mobile X-ray units, which could quickly locate bullets in injured soldiers and vastly increase their survival chances. Due to the Articles of War, governments were prevented from corresponding directly with the enemy, so asked the Red Cross to step in, and by October of 1914, the International Red Cross had established its International Prisoners of War Agency. Due to their neutrality, they were able to operate across borders, and over the course of the war, not only administered medical care to the prisoners and soldiers of both sides, but also handled almost 2 million parcels for the prisoners and raised nearly 20 million Swiss francs in donations to sustain their ability to care for the prisoners of all nations. During World War I, the humanitarian work of the Red Cross was recognised internationally to be of such great importance that in 1917 the organisation was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace. When war ended in 1918, many countries, recognising the outstanding service of the Red Cross, set about creating their own national Red Cross organisations. The United Kingdom, the United States, France, Germany and many other countries already had national organisations, but these countries were instrumental in providing assistance to others in establishing a truly global network of skilled, neutral agents committed to the relief of those suffering in times of crisis. In the years between the two world wars, the Red Cross was active around the world. During the Spanish Civil War, the International Red Cross were instrumental in the protection of civilians from aerial bombardment. They also worked closely with the French National Red Cross to distribute aid to Spanish refugees fleeing into France to escape the conflict. They were also responsible in helping hundreds of Spanish civilians to repatriate after the war ended. In 1939, at the outbreak of World War II, the Red Cross again mobilised itself to provide support to the military's medical teams. The organisation proved itself invaluable in its complete neutrality and due to the symbol of a red cross on a white background being officially recognised under the Geneva Convention, they were able to cross borders and assist in the care and support of those who needed it, regardless of the protagonist's individual allegiances. In 1944, the sterling work undertaken by the International Committee of the Red Cross was once again recognised and they received the Nobel Prize for Peace for the second time, awarded for humanitarian activities and services to prisoners of war. In 1963, on the centenary of the International Committee of the Red Cross, they once again received the Nobel Prize for Peace, 
this time awarded jointly with the League of Red Cross Societies. The League of Red Cross Societies had been founded in 1919, immediately after the end of World War I. The aim was to formally assist the many national societies to better coordinate their activities during international operations. Today, the League of Red Cross Societies encompasses not only the Red Cross, but also the Red Crescent. The Crescent was adopted by the Ottoman Empire in 1876 and officially recognised as a symbol of neutrality under the amendments to the Geneva Convention in 1929. The Red Crystal, which was inaugurated in 2005, can be used by affiliated associations who choose to display their own national symbol within the crystal, but also by non-committee members, provided they too incorporate their own recognised assistance symbol within the crystal. For example, the symbol of Margan David Atom is displayed by aid workers within Israel. If an Israeli team from the ICRC is to operate outside of its borders, the star will be seen displayed within the crystal itself. The red lion with sun was used by Iran from 1924 until 1980 when they adopted the red crescent as a symbol of their operations, although they have retained the right to display the sun and lion as it is still recognised under the Geneva Convention as a symbol of neutrality. Today, the vast majority of National Red Cross societies display either the cross or the crescent as their symbol. Many countries, though, have proposed their own symbols. The Red Flame of Siam, the Red Arch of Afghanistan, the Red Triangle of the Netherlands, the Red Rhinoceros of Sudan, the Red Wheel of India, and several others have all been put forward, but all have been rejected over concerns of symbol proliferation. Today, the Red Cross comprises over 190 million support workers from 190 countries and continues to promote humanitarian ideals and offer help in times of national crisis, from providing aid during natural disasters to working with vulnerable people in remote areas to prevent the spread of coronavirus, the Red Cross is there. But what became of its founder, Henri Dunant? In 1867, he left Geneva, never to return, and though he founded the Common Relief Society, the Common Alliance for Order and Civilization, and worked towards the creation of a world library, his debts continued to keep him in a state of poverty. The French Emperor Napoleon III had offered to cover half of his debts, provided his friends could cover the rest, but Moynier, once Dunant's friend and collaborator, used his influence to prevent his financial relief. Even the award of the gold medal prize of Science Morales could do nothing to alleviate his plight. It had been intended to award the medal to Dunant alone, but Moynier used his influence to have his and General Dufour's names added to the award, which meant that any prize money would not go to Dunant, but as a joint award, the money went to the committee as a whole. In later life, Dunant received a small allowance from some distant family members, which finally afforded him some stability, and after living in various cities around Europe, he eventually returned to Switzerland to the small town of Haydn, where he lived in obscurity. However, in September of 1895, George Baumberger, the editor of the Swiss newspaper Die Ostweis, met with Dunant and later wrote an article entitled Henry Dunant, the founder of the Red Cross. This renewed interest in Henry Dunant, culminating in 1901 with his being awarded the first Nobel Prize for Peace, an award that his organization would be awarded a further three times. The money he received with the prize, however, he never spent upon himself. It was placed in a trust beyond the reach of his creditors to be used for charitable contributions and as bequests to those who had cared for him in his later years. It was the work of Henri Dunant, his confederates, and now the millions of people worldwide that saw the Red Cross emerge through the pain of progress.